Alright, welcome to Branson Off Grid. Today we're going to look at something called a pentrometric. Pentrometric. <laughs> it's a display unit, and we're just testing this one out here on the shunts and see. Uh, that's probably good enough. What it looks like, but you can program it. You can have three amps input on this meter. This is the display which goes over to the house. Right now I just got it set on a short cable. That's the uh, uh, control unit or the the uh, input unit, I think is what they call it, where you connect your batteries. Uh, so you use shunts basically. And uh, by the way, on these uh, e-panels, I didn't even notice really, uh, on these Midnight Solar e-panels, they have shunts built in, which are the correct shunts that you need to check your uh, amp usage. So you've got, uh, as you could see there, you can do uh, three amps inputs. In other words, you can have three shunts that you can input into this unit, which input right here. It's real easy. And this is a Cat5 uh, connection, but this... Uh, Cat5 wire can actually run up to a thousand feet, so that's a, a pretty long run. Of course, this has to be out uh, close to the batteries, uh, so and the batteries have to be close to the inverters and that kind of thing. And if you want to read solar input, uh, a wind or hydro input and that kind of thing, so it kind of needs to be close to that in a sense. Hmm. I'm not really sure exactly how far the inputs could run necessarily from a shunt, but at any rate, to the uh, head unit where the display is, uh, which in this case we're going to have out the, over at the house, which is only a few hundred feet. So, a thousand feet is really nice, not having to use uh, nothing but a Cat5 twisted pair, and you can run a thousand feet. That's great. You can also they also have a RS232, a USB, and a Ethernet which can uh, be wired off of this, so that could go to a, a router, for example, and then you could uh, connect, you could collect this uh, information if you had a static IP address on your router, then you could go on the web and you could basically log the information coming out of this input unit. And the reason it's kind of noisy is because of the uh, amps, and of course, um, now the amps are way up. Probably the water heater. Cutting on, as you can see, amps 105 volts 52. So we got a big amp draw and the fans cut on, so it kind of made some noise here. And then as that happens, uh, generally you'll see like this one. This is uh, half of my panels. Okay, that looks good. 54. So I got 54 amps coming in on that one. And this one is 50.4 amps coming in on this one. So I've got two uh, sets of panels. There's 12 panels here. 3,500 watts coming in on this one. 3,500 watts coming in on that one. So 7,000 watts uh, of charging between these two outback. Uh, and typically uh, 60 amps per side is about the max I, I generally see on these. And they'll handle 80, so they're well within their range. At any rate, if you have a shunt on the input of the solar, then you can measure uh, your input amperage that's going to your batteries, your charging amperage, if you want to look at it that way. If you have a shunt on your battery, then you can, ma you can measure the load, the amp load on the battery, for example, and then you can measure, uh, <laughs> you know, and then you've got three. So if you had a, a wind generator, for example, you could uh, you could see what the wind generator is doing or the hydro or something like that. So you've got three inputs and then you just hit these buttons here. And as you can see, we're, lo we're looking at two displays. So one button is one display. The other button is the display below it. And then if you hit the button, it will roll through different. You have five different things that could be on, on one line. Five different things could be on the other line by these two buttons or or these two or which, whichever ones you're using right now i'm using uh as you can see let me scroll in battery one so basically i've just got one battery and then i've got two uh shunts wired in at the moment so we're looking at amps uh in 
from the solar actually is what that is 37.6 and those just changed uh, since we were standing here when the load dropped off the amps coming in changed so that's what's coming in at the moment and the battery voltage is at 54.4 and then that gives you a good idea uh, over at the house what your system's doing out here and it logs historical data and all that kind of thing as you can see it's very easy to wire in uh, I've just got two inputs this is one amps one, the other amps and then that's the uh, battery uh, voltage and then that's the communication cable and the other interesting thing is this uh, you've got an output for a relay so I can have a relay here and you can control that relay from this display as you can see it has alarms and you can program these alarms to alarm on volts or amps draw or, or a number of different things and you basically you want to know how to do that they have this PDF file which is uh, 39 pages on their uh, website and by the way let's just let's see if it just says over here well, here you go Bogart Engineering they sell a trimetric and a pentametric uh, display the trimetric is a little cheaper sold by Bogart and this is the pentrometric. Please read first. Yes, but there's a lot of uh, stuff here you have to read. And then this is the most interesting part. Let me see if we can get this pretty good. This kind of shows you how your shunts go and the basic wiring. And then you can see the little relay wired to the top there. Your amps in one, two, and three and then the other one is your twisted pair going over to your display and then this gives you some ideas of how you wire that in basically all you need is a uh, this shows with two battery banks so you could have amps one amps two if you had two uh, strings in other words you just put shunts on there and by the way this is a shunt uh, this is a 500 amp uh, I think it's 500 amp 50 uh, millivolt is how it's uh, what it's called and you just put two wires here, one here, one here, and then one's positive and one's negative as far as, you know, how it shows it on here. It's, it's really, they're both on the negative side. Uh, you don't put the shunts on the positive side, but you have to distinguish. In other words, the one that's closest to the battery has to be, I think that's the positive, and I think it tells you. Well, it probably doesn't tell you right here. Maybe it does. Oh okay here you go yes if you just look here or even here here's the first shunt coming off uh, battery one okay battery system one coming through the shunt as you can see the positive connection on the shunt is the one that's electrically closest to the battery terminal so the first side that it gets to that's the po that's what they call positive and the negative is on the other side they're actually always on the negative side of the battery and it shows another shine over here on the negative side of the battery the closest one is the positive connection so when you wire that in it's important that you've got that correct so it's wiring it's doing the amperage in the correct direction everything is going to read right and then it shows uh, some shunts over here for solar array controller so that's what i've got right now we're just looking at this and this <coughs> battery voltage but the relay is an interesting thing. Now, uh, let's just look at this one. We're standing here. This is the other one. Just shows the pinouts, and then uh, gives us some information. This is in your uh, book here, which you really have to print out. Here's your uh, specifications, summary of functions. Uh, my lighting's probably not the best, but at any rate, uh, you'll be able to look at that. And then the interesting thing is when you go through all this is that there's a number of ways that you can program what will trigger this relay either normally open normally closed and then what to trigger on whether it's a volts reading amps reading high low whatever so there's just all kinds of ways to use that now if we are this is a 48 volt system but it can work on 12 24 or 48 volts so it can work on all three voltages and basically uh, this one you just wire 48 volts in that's 48 volt but then you have to have a, a 48 volt relay 
which oh I, and I was on the page and we I was gonna oh there it is okay so he gives us some specs in here on the relay as well you can see relay control output and then he gives us some specs on uh, a 48 volt relay for example right there and then who to manufacture uh, Tyco Tyco P and B is what he says and then a, a possible part numbers what that would be so just depends but uh, then you uh, put it in a relay and from the uh, display you can go over here uh, your alarm might go off you could walk out and you could push a button and trigger your relay or you could have the relay trigger automatically at like I said higher or low voltages or amperages things like that and then it could just automatically uh, kick your generator on that's a, a general idea kicking your generator on but you might want to use it for something else so or you might want to use the relay manually so you've just got that it's just part of the system so it's really nice uh, and these relay uh, these uh, displays are programmable so uh, it comes uh, set up the way you see it, but you can reprogram each button to have five, five different uh, displays and then depending on what you've got very customizable So eventually this will be over at the house and both of these just go in these little uh, plastic uh, Box here's the other box This is for the display unit at the house At any rate so that's the basics and then all that uh, of course like I said you can have it uh, an internet computer set up or whatever they do have a software so if you look at Bogart engineering and you can get all the information you need we're just testing this one just got it powered up and I thought it would be interesting uh, not everybody knows about these uh, displays they're very reasonable uh, not everybody wants to be on the internet so that's something if you just want to display at your house or wherever you've got your solar system and you don't want to access it remotely or don't necessarily care about having it on a computer then this is your option here it's very inexpensive uh, with the shunts we're looking at about four hundred dollars I think here for the display the control unit and I got three shunts and we've got two on it at the moment so at any rate, if we need to do a little update, we'll get on to that later on how the, uh, maybe how the programming goes as far as the display or something. If we need to do that, I'll cover that on another video. So thank you for watching and please subscribe and send that uh, to your friends that uh, might want to be off-grid. Thanks.